Well, today's the day we finally do a walk around. Okay, hey, before we jump into this walk around, I just wanted to make a couple points. Uh, my family used to drive a Forerunner. We loved it. Our problem was we got into whitewater rafting three, four years ago, and we started incorporating it on our camping and trips. Um, that meant we had to haul a lot more gear. Um, that is when we decided to transition from a Forerunner to a Tundra. We decided to pull the trigger on that a month and a half before we were going on a 3,200 mile Baja trip. Uh, so I had to get this thing whipped into gear from 100% stock for a, a pretty fun off-roading trip in Baja very fast. There's definitely things I would have done different. Um, there's definitely things I will do different um, and changes that I will make. So what I'm going to show you on the truck is, is it, it, it basically represents a pretty quick build. Um, there are a, a lot of stuff that I would change, by the way, isn't because one manufacturer was bad or anything like that. It's just because now that I've actually beat this thing up and seen what it's capable of, the Tundra is a much more capable truck than I thought that it was. Um, after taking it to Moab, we learned a lot. Um, now I know that I actually, I don't, I don't want to set this thing up for extreme rock crawling in a full size truck. That's dumb, but I do want to put a long travel system on it. That's going to be really fun in the desert. Uh, that'll work a little bit better in places like Moab. I do want to put 37s on it. So I'll have to do a body chop, um, body mount chop and all, all these different things. Right. But right now I will tell you that what it does have on it is, is a good build that can be done fairly fast with mostly bolt on parts. And, um, and, and it's been able to handle some crazy stuff, a lot crazier stuff than, than most people actually do to their vehicle. So it's not a bad build, um, but just understand if some of it doesn't quite make sense, there's a reason for that. Anyhow, without further ado, we'll jump into it. Okay, so getting started up here in the front. Uh, first, obviously, thing is we have this uh, stealth bumper from Addicted Desert Designs, ADD. Um, it's a great bumper. It's, it's got to be one of the lowest profile um, bumpers that you can get um, that actually has a uh, built-in winch. Um, that is, uh, you know, the entry angle, entry angle, departure angle, I guess, if you're going in reverse um, on this thing is amazing. I took it all through Hell's Revenge, never drug once, had no issues. Um, it's a great bumper. Um, we've got, it's got a cutout for a 40 inch light bar. So we have the Baja Designs on X6 um, arc. So it's an actually a curved light bar. Um, we actually did run half of Hell's Revenge in the dark. Um, and this lights up basically, it feels like the whole world. So it's a great light bar um, and really good quality. Um, definitely would recommend it, uh, but it doesn't come cheap. The other thing you'll see on this is the mounting points on this thing. I mean the recovery points. These things are big, they're all reinforced. None of those cheap little tiny uh, pieces. So I'm a big fan of this. Uh, if I had to give any feedback on it, it does rub a little bit here on the sides um, when you're four buying in pretty rough terrain. Um, hasn't really caused any problems. This piece is plastic on your car, so you don't have to worry about that rusting. You just gotta touch up your bumper every once in a while. Um, other than that, the only other thing that's I would say is kind of annoying is there isn't really a great design for if you need to get to your winch um, to like pull the release um, lever or something like that, you're definitely uh, getting down on the ground and involved down there. No easy way to get in there. It does have these other spots on the side where you can add additional lighting um, if you want. I just haven't put anything in there yet. Uh, so that kind of covers the front. Okay, so under the hood we have of course our uh, Magnuson supercharger. Nope, just kidding. I wish. No Magnuson supercharger. Uh, we have a custom paint job though, obviously, 
brought to you by Moab. I think it's called Red Dirt. Uh, yeah, I need to clean this thing up. Um, yeah, not a lot going on under here other than we have added in the SP91 Switch Pros. Um, this is an awesome device. Kind of gives you the ability to connect up to eight devices, keep your wiring really organized. The controller is right there that also works with Bluetooth and everything else. And you send one control wire from that into your cab. And what you end up with is this nice little panel that there's a perfect spot for on a Tundra. That's it. So you got this nice little light up control panel. You can control up to eight devices and it's awesome. Uh, obviously I've got all of my lights on there and then I've got marked out for some additional stuff that's gonna be added in the near future. Uh, the only other modification on the inside in here, by the way, um, obviously we have the antenna for the Wii Boost right next to where I mount my phone. Uh, you want it literally within an inch. Uh, there's a whole video on the Wii Boost um, system, uh, cell booster. Uh, so if you want more details about that, go ahead and uh, check out the video that I have on my channel for that. Um, only other interior mod, might as well finish up the interior. I haven't really done much to the interior. Um, is I did actually take out one of my rear seats. I have two kids that are very young. Uh, so when we go on trips, they obviously sit there. And we actually put our fridge right here. Um, there we put the Goal Zero, um, the Yeti 1000 that we use to run the fridge when the car's not gone. Um, that allows us to take advantage of the uh, power, 12 volt power that's right here um, and not have to run a lot of wiring uh, to the back. And I can fit the whole entire um, dual door, dual zone fridge lengthwise here. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um, that's actually pretty key with the, it's a huge fridge. The reason we have such a big fridge is we go camping with a lot of people that don't have um, fridges. You know, they're using a Yeti cooler or something like that. But if you're out on the road for 10 days and not going into civilization, um, we're able to use half of our Dometic um, freezer to make ice for them. Uh, so we can refry, re refreeze ice packs and help everyone stay out on the road a lot longer. Um, so yeah, that kind of covers the interior and under the hood. The only other thing I'd say under the hood is I have a rock light set up and I actually always put one of the rock lights under my hood so if I have to work at night on the engine, um, I'm able to see. Uh, the other one's in the back underneath the tent and then the other six are in the wheel wells and underneath the, the doors. I'll show you those in a second. Okay, looking at the side of the truck, the main thing we're gonna have is the CBI sliders. These rock sliders are awesome. They can definitely support the entire weight of the truck. Um, I know that because I've dropped the entire weight of the truck on them many, many times. Um, and they hold up and they do their job of protecting the doors. So really impressed with those. They work great and when you have small kids, they do work great as a step to get in. Um, we can talk about suspension. We have the Old Man Emu suspension and um, it's the Old Man Emu BP-51 kit. So these are coilovers with remote reservoirs in the front and the rear. Um, the rear also has the Old Man Emu Dakar uh, leaf springs. They come in a medium weight and in a heavy weight. If you're gonna be adding tents and racks and all this overland gear, you definitely want the heavy weight. The other thing that's really cool about these shocks is they are adjustable. So you can adjust the compression and recoil uh, with a spanner wrench just on the side of the road really easily. It just takes a couple minutes. Um, you notice I do still have my stock upper control arms. All that stuff is eventually going to get ripped out. Uh, someday a uh, King triple bypass system is going in here. Going to do a long travel system. But for now, this gets us through everything we want to do and works quite well. Uh, the other thing is we do have the rock lights under each one of these. They're up here. Um, and then again at the middle point and in the rear. Uh, they do come in handy, like, like I said the other day when we were driving in the middle of the night on uh, Hell's Revenge. It was dark. They did come in handy on that point, but really what we mostly use them for is scene lighting at a campsite. Um, they're nice. They're not that bright. I know that most people would say that's a bad thing, but uh, we like it because you turn them on at night, 
you have enough light to work with stuff, uh, but it's not like constantly making you go night blind. Uh, so that's a MIC tuning set that we have. They're 129 bucks. For what they are, I am really impressed and we've taken them through a lot of off-roading and a lot of rocks have hit them and they're still all kicking and no issues there. Super easy install. Um, so like that. Also Bluetooth controlled and I mean you can do all the colors and everything. I usually just leave them on white but my kids love to uh, make them change colors and pretend they're having a dance party. Okay, let's talk wheels and uh, rubber. So we've got the fuel vector um, wheels on here. They're 18 inch um, and they are one millimeter offset. I'm not a big fan of the offset, um, pumping your wheels way out. Uh, other than that, uh, they're wrapped in the BF Goodrich KO2s. I've run these tires on almost every off-road truck that I've ever had. Always been a big fan. Um, they get good miles on them and they're pretty dang tough. So, big fan of those. Um, yeah, I guess maybe the last thing you probably notice is a lot of people ask me where I got the stubby antenna. Honestly, I just searched stubby antenna on Amazon and grabbed one that looked normal. Because um, the big one we were breaking off when we were going through the bushes. Uh, also, on the side of the truck, also kind of front, uh, obviously we have the Prince U rack up here. Um, this thing is an amazing rack. It's nice and low profile. Um, it's got a gazillion mounting options along the top and along the side. Big fan of it. Looks really good. Uh, you notice I don't have anything on it right now. Usually that only gets filled up when we're going on really, really long trips. Um, probably add, you know, solar panel up there and then usually some boxes for extra gear, but really thin ones uh, that don't cause a lot of problems with the wind. And usually mounted back a little bit um, back here, so the wind's not catching them up in the front. Um, other than that, I think that covers everything on the side. Uh, obviously there's an RCI rack here. Um, I've got a whole entire video on how to pick out racks and tons of information on this rack and uh, some of the issues that we've had with it. So if you want to know more about bed racks, uh, check out that video. Um, yeah, and then these are the mounting points for our 270 awning, which I only put on when we're going to be going camping and I know we're going to be using it just to kind of save weight. Um, other than that, I think we can talk about the tent. Okay, so there's a cool story about this tent. Um, I actually had a roof nest sandpiper tent that has uh, springs on the inside that pop it up. Um, they're a little wonky and we broke them when we were on a rafting trip in the lock saw. Uh, so we actually contacted, you know, all the tents were on back order uh, and so it was going to be a couple months before we could get a tent. So I actually contacted the owner of Area BFE Tents because we were on our way to Moab and Area BFE is this legendary off-roading park in Moab. So I thought, who knows, maybe they have like a showroom model or something. So I asked him, hey, do you have a showroom, scratch and dent model, anything um, that I could pick up? And he said, yeah, we actually have one. Um, so we went to Moab, he agreed to meet us there. Um, but what it turns out, you know, they don't actually have a showroom in Moab and he's actually located in Colorado. So he actually drove the tent eight hours down and personally hand delivered it to us. Um, I don't think you can count on getting a hand delivery from area BFE tents all the time, but I think he just heard our sad story and what we had going on and took pity on us and was awesome. Um, obviously, you can see these tents go up and down so fast. They're so easy to pack up. They're so easy to, to open and close. I would never ever go back to a soft top tent after using one of these. They're incredible, um, good quality. I love, I love, you know, they're more aerodynamic, they're just awesome tents. Working our way around to the back, we have the Expedition One rear bumper, the dual swing bumper. Uh, you can see we got a full size 35 inch tire mounted on there with a Trasheroo, uh, one of my favorite cheaper accessories um, for camp, especially when you have kids. Um, we also have the Baja Squadron lights down in the bumper down there. Um, and then you can see I have two jerry can holders on here. And I actually have room right here to put like a high lift jack or additional accessories. I think I'm going to put a small propane tank actually back there. 
Um, the two jerry cans, I actually do have a regular fuel can, metal one. Um, and then I actually have one of these lifesavers. I don't know if you've ever heard of these, but this is a water can that's got a full filtration system in it. So once I use up the water that I have, I can just refill from a river, a lake, a stream, a muddy puddle, um, and I'll always have all the water I need. So I usually take one fuel can and one uh, water can. And on longer trips, like when we run Baja, I'll actually take um, up to four fuel cans. So I have an additional uh, Baja Designs uh, jerry can mount uh, that I actually will just throw in the back of the truck up by the back window to keep the weight forward. Um, but yeah, for most trips, we don't need that much fuel. So this works pretty good. Once it's open, you know, it's gonna look like this. So you have two swing arms, you have these super strong uh, clips that lock it into place and actually the way they're designed they support some of the weight um, of, of the load on there so it takes takes some of the pressure off of this um, hinge but also you'll notice this is one of the biggest hinges you'll see on these dual swings uh, so these are really durable tough hinges back here um, so yeah I'm pretty impressed this bumper is it's very expensive but you get what you pay for and there's a reason um, it's as expensive as it is. It's just really well designed and you can beat the tar out of this thing with a lot of weight on these arms and I just don't think you're ever going to break it especially with this uh, patented design that they have for, for latching these things. Um, the other quick thing, there, I, I do like to do honest reviews so I don't just always say positive things about everything. I, I, everything can always be improved. So the only knock that I would say on this, which is not a big deal at all, but there is this little latch right here, um, drops into a pin on this track. And it's what keeps this whole thing from uh, swinging. Like if you're parked on the side of the hill, you don't want it swinging closed and slamming on your fingers. Um, this little pin is actually a really amazing design, how they have the track done and a lot of thought went into it. The only thing on this thing is the hardware that holds it in place are these two little bolts and they are not very um, strong. So I have had issues with snapping one of those. Um, I actually just keep some extra bolts for it um, in the drawers in my deck system. So it's an easy repair, it takes like five minutes honestly. It's the only weak point I found on this whole entire bumper and obviously it doesn't impact the core function of it. It's just more of a nice to have feature. Most of you guys have seen these before. Um, yeah, Dect has this drawer system that goes in. For the most part, it is waterproof. Uh, I've never had any water get into mine. And honestly, it, it is pretty dust proof. I've, I've heard people say that some dust gets in, but most of the dust that gets in mine is really just stuff that's on the gear that I'm taking in and out of constantly. So if we go ahead and open this thing up. Um, it's on these amazing sliders. You know, it's got this nice big handle that unlatches it. Um, you have these different tool cases that you can put in it to separate stuff. Um, the drawers slide so nice because they have these huge sliders. So if you want to close this thing, you literally are just pushing it and it closes super nice. Uh, same thing, you can see the sliders right there in the bottom, right there and right there. So big giant wheels look like skateboard wheels or something. Yep. Camp stove in here. This is usually the one we'll fit our whole entire kitchen in one drawer um, along with other stuff and then mostly camping stuff in the other one um, and obviously a fair amount of tools. Uh, Got to be able to do road repairs. Okay well Thanks for hanging around for that whole entire thing. This video is getting long now, so I want to wrap it up pretty quick. I will say one last thing. These little stripes right here, I think I get asked more questions about those stripes than anything else on my entire truck. Uh, I picked those up from a guy, uh, his shop is called Taco Vinyl. You can find them on Instagram and also at tacovinyl.com. Um, I order them, ships you, uh, and you just install them yourself. Great guy, has a lot of interesting products on his uh, site for Tacomas and Tundras. So check that out. Um, thanks for tuning in. I actually had fun making this video, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, lots of changes are coming to the truck, so definitely subscribe and you'll know when there's new videos on new products and new things that we're doing to it. Uh, like, 
eventually getting 37s and a triple bypass long travel system on this thing. Um, so yeah, stick around for all of that in the future and thanks for tuning in. Talk to you guys soon.